Hi everyone, my name is Keegan Evans from Parker Lane Productions. You can follow me on Twitter, at Keegan T. Evans, and today I'm going to be taking you through a Flurn-style Photoshop tutorial. Now if you don't know what Flurn is, you should go ahead and check the link down below. They're an amazing Photoshop tutorial website led by Aaron Nace. Today, I'm going to be taking you through how to create a composite movie poster image. So let's get into Photoshop and check it out. Alright guys, so here we are in Photoshop, and this is the image that we're creating today. This is based on the Deathly Hallows Part 1 movie poster, as seen here. So here we are back at my image, and let's go ahead and get rid of this group and show you what we're starting with. So here I am on a seamless backdrop, and this is relatively easy to cut out just by using the quick selection tool or the pen tool if you want to be a little bit more accurate. Just for the sake of time, I already cut myself out, and there I am without a foot, and that's just wonderful. So there's the background image that I also shot. And you can see, I look like I don't fit into this image at all, but we're going to be doing a lot of different color things to, to fit this together and really make it look like the movie poster that you see right here. All right, so first things first, I will address that I don't have a foot in this image, and we'll figure that out later and we'll cover it up, so don't worry. Let's start with the background. And you can see that in the original image, the background is actually kind of motion blurred. So I want to do the same thing with ours. So let's go back to our image. I'm going to hit Control J just to make a new layer. I'll go up to Filter, Blur, Motion Blur, and just up to something that looks pretty good. I like, I like that, around 42 pixels, and hit OK. But it's not everywhere in that image, so I'm going to hit my Layer Mask tool, hit Control I, and so now we can just paint with white where we want this to show up. So I'm just going to paint along here, and allow this to kind of just find the blur all around here. And we're just painting in. And normally I would take a little bit more time doing this, but because it's a tutorial, I'm going to go pretty quick and just get through it. All right, so that looks pretty good. It's a little bit more blurred than I want, but it looks solid. So in the image, you'll see that the background's really blown out. So I'm going to go ahead and grab a curves adjustment layer and I'm just going to crank it up. And then I'm going to double click on the layer. And down here where it says underlying layer, you can hold Alt or Option and grab this bar here. And as you pull down, you'll see that it stops affecting the shadows. And really, we're only blowing out the highlights. And that's exactly what I want. So I'm going to hit Control i on the layer mask. And I'm going to hit G for my gradient tool. And my gradient is with the foreground. And it's at opacity 100%. And I'm just going to click and drag and I think that looks pretty solid. Now, also in the original image, the ground below is pretty dark. So we're going to grab another curves adjustment layer and just crank this down. And then, once again, invert it. And we're just going to paint on with white. And that looks pretty good. Awesome. Cool. So there's a little bit more atmosphere in the original image. So I'm just going to actually make a new layer. Oh, that was a new group. I'm going to make a new layer and grab my brush, and I'm going to use a custom brush. And this is actually a brush that was created by Flurn, and I have the video linked down below to where you can make this custom brush. So I'm just going to paint with white, and I'm going to go over here to my brush options. Uh, just make sure the transfer is on. And I want my opacity to jitter quite a bit, and maybe at 30% opacity. Here we go. And I'm just going to paint. And it doesn't look very good to start out with, but I'm going to play with the opacity and play with things like that. Maybe make a couple different layers. Just pile it on. You can play with the blending mode as well. Make an overlay. That looks pretty solid. I like that how that looks. All right, so let's go ahead and add me in here. And I'm just going to shift click on all these groups of the background. And I'm going to hit Control G and name that background. And that way, we've got this craziness going on. Put that background in there, too. Awesome. All right, so let's deal with me now. I'm going to hit Control g on my layer and just name it Keegan, because that's my name. And let's go on my layer, hit Control j for a new layer. And we're going to start affecting me. So first off, I'm going to make this an overlay, because I really want the shadows to be intense, because that's a very movie poster feel. So obviously, I don't want it that intense. So I'm going to bring the opacity down to about 20%. And if I click that off and on, you're going to see that looks pretty solid. 
but I'm gonna emphasize it even more and grab a, curve, a, grab a curves layer, pull that down and double click on it again. And now I'm gonna hold Alt or Option and instead of clicking on the black bars, I'm gonna click on the white ones and just bring this down. And so it's only gonna affect the shadows as I bring this. And I'm gonna control I on that, grab a normal brush again and just paint in here with white. And that's starting to look pretty good. And you just paint on and get these shadows really more defined. Maybe a capacity about 60. And I'm really just emphasizing those shadows, making the image look a little just more harsh, a little movie poster-esque. And that looks pretty good. So I want to do something else that's going to add me into the image. So I'm also going to put some fog right over myself. So I'm going to grab that brush again, that Flurn brush. And I'm just going to paint a little bit over myself. And just little random clicks. And I'm going to bring the opacity down quite a bit on that. And I think that looks pretty solid. So now we're going to affect color a lot because that's what's actually going to let me fit into this situation. So let's go ahead and make a new group and we're just going to call this color. And this is where we're going to make all these different adjustment layers. So let's make a hue and saturation adjustment layer. And I'm going to hit colorize and just bring it to a blue green kind of area. We're going to do this with multiple different layers. So it doesn't have to be perfect on the first one. Bring that opacity down. And that looks pretty good. And something I like to do is actually grab the original poster and I like to bring it into my existing project. And that just helps me compare. And I'm going to just throw that above everything else. That just helps me compare colors and maybe even grab colors from the original. I can go here, grab my brush, and uh, just hold Alt or Option and maybe sample a color. I really like that color that's down there. And I can go back into our color group here and hit uh, Control Delete when my proper color is in the uh, background color. And then it'll fill it like that. And then we can change the uh, blending mode. I think I like overlay for this one. And lower that opacity down. And then check it again and see how it compares to the original. Now I think we need a little bit more blues, so let's go into our curves and we'll crank up the blues a little bit. That looks pretty good. Let's compare it again. We're getting closer. I think we need to grab a curves layer and bring down the overall brightness of this image because we're getting a little bit too much going on. So I'm going to go ahead and do that, but I don't want too much affecting me personally. So I'm going to paint black at about 30% just on myself. And I'm just going to get rid of this curves layer on me just to brighten myself up because you can see Harry's sticking out a little bit more than the background is, as he should, because, well, he's the main character. So we'll just paint on me. And that's starting to look really good. Awesome. And you can see, I'll hold Alt and click on the layer, and that's what the layer mask looks like. So whenever you want to see what that layer mask just looks like, just hold Alt or Option and click on it. And there you go. All right, let's compare it to the original. And that's looking really similar. And I really like how the color's coming out. All right, so let's go, let's start working on the wand. And I'm just going to create a new group. And call that wand. And let's make a new layer. And we'll fill that with black. So I'm going to hit filter, render, lens flare, because I think all wands should have lens flares. And I'm putting this on a black layer so that I can go ahead and change the blending mode to screen. And that's going to allow me to just move this wherever I want. So I'm going to hit V and just move this right to the tip of the wand. And that's also going to let me go ahead and go filter, blur, Gaussian blur, because you, don't, you want it to fit into the scene a little bit more. And I think I want it a little bit brighter, so I'm just going to duplicate that. And that looks pretty solid. I'm going to merge those layers, change this to screen again, and just add a layer mask because I want to paint away that green part of the lens flare. I don't want it affecting 
me too much there. I think that looks pretty good. So one thing I noticed is I feel like the red from the wand would be affecting me a little bit more. Uh, so I'm gonna grab a curves layer and go to my red channel and just crank that up. And I'm gonna double click on that layer and only make this affect the highlights. So I'm gonna pull down on that black little lever thing there. I don't know what you call them, but that works. And I'm gonna hit Control I and I'm gonna paint again. So a lot of this is just, if I paint with the right color, a lot of this is just painting onto layers, making sure it works, and just playing around with colors. That's starting to look really good. Awesome. So as you can see, there's just a little bit more red that's being affected on me, and it makes a little bit more sense. Not that this movie poster really has to make that much sense, but it's okay. It's magic. It can really do whatever it wants. And just because this is bothering me, I'm going to go ahead and make a new layer and just start painting this down here. Getting that movie poster feel, because that's probably where the, the titles will go. So you don't really have to show too much information. Kind of paint it into this tree. And I'm just painting with a nice soft brush at opacity 60% and a flow of 47. And that looks pretty good. But I'm going to add a little vignette up here, just because I want to. I think it will look good. Looks very movie poster-esque, I think. And we're looking really good, guys. That's pretty solid. Now, let's go back to the wand, and let's add in our beam of light. So I'm going to make a new layer. I'm going to hit P for the pen tool. Just click in the middle of this light here, and create a straight line there. Let's go back to our brush. And we're going to get the brush ready to stroke the path of the pen. Now, that sounds pretty outrageous, but that's what it's called. So I'm going to hit zero to make my opacity 100%, and I'm just going to grab a color. It doesn't really matter what color it's going to be. Maybe a uh, bright red here. Go back to pen and right click, and hit stroke path. And then I'm just going to delete that path. And that's just going to get us this little beam of light that looks terrible, but when we change the blending mode, it's going to look pretty solid. So let's check out Let's just play with the blending modes. Vivid light looks pretty good. I think we can do a couple different things with this. I like color burn. Let's do vivid light. I think that looks good. We'll do a vivid light and kind of bring down that opacity. I'm just going to duplicate that layer and maybe change it to something else. And uh, give it a blur just to make it affect a little bit bigger of an area. Play with the opacity a bit. And I'll do it again. And maybe just make a color overlay. White. I don't know if I duplicated that layer. There it is. There we go. So that's looking pretty good. And then just to add a little bit more depth to the magic, I'm going to make a new layer, and I'm going to grab another Flurn created brush that I've linked the video tutorial down below, and it's just a dust brush, but I'm going to be using it to make these uh, little flares. So all I'm going to do is go over to my brush options here, make sure it transfers on a little bit, and just check out the scattering. Maybe not scatter too much, I want it pretty dense. Great. And then I'm just going to sample colors from the, the beam and the wand. And I'm just going to start painting on new layers. And just playing around. And you can change the blending mode and change different opacities. Do it on a bunch of different layers. Just until you get something that you like. Something that looks pretty good. I played a long time with the original image that I did. Uh, I played with blending modes and things like that. But for now, I'll just I'll play around. That looks pretty good. Got this magical dust coming off of it. I think I'm going to grab those layers. And I'm just going to bring them below the beam. That looks better. That makes a little more sense in my head. I don't know why, but it just looks better. And now we're pretty close to where we were before. I think 
Overall, I'm just going to add one more hue and saturation layer, just to bring it together. I'm going to hit colorize again. And I'm going to make this a blue-green on there. Bring that opacity down. I think that looks pretty solid. And I'm just going to paint on my face a little bit, just because I want a little bit more skin tone. Grab a soft brush again. I want a little bit more skin tone out of my face. But that's just a preference. I think we can use just a little bit more there. And that looks pretty awesome. And then you can go ahead and add other things that will make it look like a movie poster. I added some titles. Um, <laughs> you can be fun with it. You can do whatever you want. But So there's the image. And let's compare it to the one that I made earlier. And that's pretty close, guys. And I just did that really quick. And I think that looks pretty solid. So thanks so much for watching, guys. I hope that you go check out Flurn because they're amazing and they've taught me so many things. And I hope to be able to do more videos like this soon. I'll see you later. Thanks so much for watching, guys. I'll Flurn you later. Keegan, this isn't Flurn, but you, you wish you were on it. Thanks so much for watching, guys. I'll Flurn you later. No, go check out Flurn. This is looking pretty solid. I got magic. I don't have Ron and Hermione, so I have magic. Because I don't have friends, just magic. <laughs> I don't have any friends, I just have magic. I don't have Ron and Hermione. Just magic. That's my friend.